what up? See people saying what up in the chat. Um, and I was getting all kind of messages, man, from uh, the Eminem hopeful. And Eminem's out here doing numbers. I don't really like, like I said, I was going to go on the Eminem hiatus as far as like having him be a topic of discussion, excuse me, until, you know, he dropped some music. He dropped some music. Now, I don't know if you guys heard the show last week when I was asking about production. The production, it kind of happened in a way that we thought it was going to happen. No Dillard production, no, you know, grand send off in that way from, you know, the production uh, giants that I would say in the genre that have always seemed to big up Eminem. I don't even know how much Dre did on this project. You guys could probably let me know because you probably have the credits there. I was so focused on actually listening to the album itself. Um, what did you guys think about the album? I want to I want to start there. I want to start there. You guys can say whatever you like in the chat. But um, my my perspective is listening to the music that we've heard from many of our veterans over this past week specifically. And if we could talk about Nas, Jay, we talk about all the greats, even when we talk about Kendrick, even when we have gripes about Drake and uh, what he does. And Drake hasn't been around nearly as long as some of these guys, right? Kendrick or Drake. We talk about growth a lot. And um, I'm also going to talk about LL Cool J's interview with uh, Charlemagne the Guy, which I think Charlemagne did an incredible job. Um, we're going to talk about that as well. And a lot that I got from that interview, we talk about veterans in the game, we talk about veterans in music in general. We talk about growth. And <clears throat> this album doesn't really, and it's not really indicative of growth on any level. Um, it's, you know, it's somewhat backpedaling, but the way it's titled, it kind of gives that excuse for such. So where I want to start here is why exactly does hip hop need or ever need a Slim Shady? Now, you know, for the people who might think, you know, Mike's being a hater, like saying this and that, out of pocket or whatever. Why do we love hip hop so much, right? Hip hop is something that, from a poetic standpoint and from an artistic standpoint, we're actually getting the artists' lives. We're actually getting their accounts. We're actually inspired by their stories. And, you know, some, some truth to the aspiration that, you know, they put out there to get you to go out there and do what you want to do in your life. And it's motivating, right? Musically motivating. Even when you look at Big, even when you look at Pac, uh, even when you look at all the greats, they have motivating stories and they have stories that you can connect with on some level. When I listen to this effort and it's, a, it's about name dropping, it really lets me know and it really reminds me of what this Slim Shady character once was. And it's entertainment, you know? And, and I guess it's seemingly entertainment. It's kind of forced entertainment, but no one really takes it seriously. Like, let's just say, you know, the Lizzo name drop, for instance. When he goes in on Lizzo on the song, I think it's Road Rage. And, or at least he mentions Lizzo, and then he goes on this whole rant about you know, overweight people and, you know, fat shaming, if you will, right? Just going over the top to be overly offensive and hiding behind the monker that, you know, this is not Eminem saying this, this is Slim Shady saying this. So why exactly do we need a character like that if the actual artist themselves isn't going to actually, you know, say it with their chest, right? Why do we need someone who is going to go out there just for shock value and quote unquote entertainment value when the artists themselves can come back and, and say, you know what? I didn't say that. Some shady said that. That's like if I get here on this platform with you guys and actually say some things that may be hard hitting, maybe, um, you know, may hit the censors a little bit. And then say, you know what? That wasn't Mike D saying that. That was Shady D or whatever. And come with some sort of uh, alter ego that I can actually hide behind when, you know, these are things that I actually think are things that I really feel. And I think that at 52, 
I think Eminem's 52 now, right? I think at this point in your career and in your life, it's just kind of corny, man. You know what I mean? Like, you can kind of play this alter ego thing, like, in your 20s and, you know, things like that. And it was the 90s, 2000s. This is something that you can say, you know what? I did that when I was younger. I was under the influence, whatever. You could throw that on that. But doing that at 52 years old and expecting people to actually take that serious, it's kind of corny. But, I mean, again, if we're looking at this from a – because somebody hit me up and was like, well, maybe we should look at what Eminem does as satire and as, uh, you know, kind of like a Weird Al Yankovic type of rapper, joking rap. That's fine, too, if we want to look at it from that standpoint. But if we're looking at it from that standpoint and we're not taking this artist serious or anything this artist is saying serious, how do you even rank this artist anywhere near at the height? How can this person be top 10, top 15 if we're not feeling the stories? Hip hop is supposed to be the core. And when I say the streets, I'm not talking about on the block, blah, blah, blah. I'm talking about basically this is this is. Um, from the heart. And this is what you're saying from the heart. We're supposed to really mean this. We're supposed to really um, take what artists say to heart to a certain extent. And yeah, Weird Al to another level. And no one sits here and says, you know what? What Weird Al does is cool. And he has his own uh, subgenre and own lane for it. But no one's sitting here saying, yo, Weird Al is one of the greatest artists ever. And so I think that we kind of got to take those things with a grain of salt now when i listen to this effort it just sounds like it sounds very forced Uh, i want to do whatever i can do to offend people i want to say whatever i can say that's gonna that's gonna trend that's going to um you know hit twitter it's going to um hold on one second guys But yeah, what you're doing, whatever you can to trend, to um, you know, hit Twitter, hit the, you know, hit the algorithm. And it's funny, man, when game goes out there and is constantly name dropping, it's a problem. But when this artist actually does it, it's funny. It's um, uh, it's a whole different narrative. XXL actually went out there and um, counted his name drops. Let me go through some of these real fast. So as far as rappers go, they cut it down in the top in uh, actual categories. As far as rappers go, uh, his name drops on this album. You got Andre 3000, Baby Tron, Big Daddy Kane, Big Sean, Black Eyed Peas, Cannabis, Cool C, uh, The Baby, Diddy, Easy Mill, G- um, um, Jizza, excuse me, Intelligent Hulum, Jadakus, Ja Rule, Joyner Lucas, Kendrick Lamar, Kid Cudi, Lil Wayne, LL Cool J, Lord Jamar, Megan Thee Stallion, Melly Mel, MGK, Nas, Nicki Minaj, Playboy Cardi, Redman, Steady B, The Notorious B.I.G., Tupac, Will Smith, and Ye. And yes, you guessed it. The game wasn't on that list. Um, And for political figures, it has Abraham Lincoln, Jimmy Carter, Kim Jong-un, family. He broke it down in so many uh, sections where this whole Slim Shady thing is, you know, it's, it's name dropping. It's trying to actually go out there and register something with the public and, for lack of a better term, cloud chase. Now, on a brighter level and on the good side of it for the Eminem fans that are out there, the rhyming, I mean, he actually sounds good and sounds comfortable in this pocket doing these things. He actually sounds better doing this than he has in a very long time with some of his more more his attempts to actually have some more mature content so that begs the question if he's best at doing more so the satire comedy stuff or offensive things where does that place him all time and if he has to go backward to actually reach into something like that from a subject matter standpoint how great is he really? It's a backward stance. Now, J.I.D. to me was a very big standout on this um, album. I was actually surprised to hear J.I.D. as a feature. 
Chad Z got on there and killed it. Um, flow wise, I think you know a lot of things in pocket. The production is better than we normally get from an Eminem project. But again, I think for the people who are into Eminem's music, they, I'm sure they love this album. But I would also say, does this really connect with the people who listened to him in the early 2000s, late 90s? You guys can answer that question. I mean, what do you guys think of the album? <laughs> they say you hate him, bro. I don't hate him. I don't hate anybody. I'm just critiquing the music and I'm just keeping this thing as balanced as I would for Jay-Z, for Nas, for LL Cool J, for Kanye West, whatever. Like, we don't write different rules for different people. Um, I don't think that the single hit too well. I mean, are you guys hearing uh, Houdini too much? I mean, do you not look at the Houdini video and see that this is a retread of something that was uh, previously made 20 years prior? And again, if you have no problem with your artist going backwards, I mean, that's fine. But again, let's not act like the music that was made that he is uh, regurgitating was the most mature music anyway. The problem with his catalog in the first place is it didn't age well and it wasn't mature from jump. This is not like somebody who made, and again, I'm going to use a grand example here when we're talking about Nas with Illmatic. This is not somebody who made a mature album at 19 years old that you're going back and trying to kind of retrace certain steps with that. If you're trying to recreate Guilty Conscience and you're trying to recreate, you know, Hi, My Name Is, or in the case of this album, um, uh, Without Me, at 52 years old, how well is that really going to translate? And to go out there and go out your way to try to be as offensive as possible and the uh, the funny part about all of this he keeps talking about being canceled he's never been canceled the baby was canceled we saw when the baby went out there and got on stage and said what he said we saw the repercussions we saw the fact that different organizations reached out to him and were trying to shake him down for donations we saw that we've never seen that really happen to eminem when We've seen the quote unquote picket signs and the uh, you know smashing of the tapes, but at what point was he being canceled for shows? At what point was radio not playing his records? At what point was he being quote unquote banned from any major airways and it actually affected his numbers? We've never seen that. And for him to actually say those things in recent time is even more laughable. It's, it's like, you're not getting canceled. You've never been canceled. You've been able to say whatever you've wanted to say on the microphone, which is fine. It's cool, whatever. But other artists in this genre have not been able to say a quarter of what you've been able to say, and they've had to pay the price for it. Um, I thought that the Ja Rule stuff <clears throat> was cheap shots again. If you're not going to mention the game, I don't want to hear you coming to Ja Rule. I mean, what? What's the point? You have a wide open lane. You have a wide open lane to go ahead and finish off somebody who went at you first. We're talking about Ja Rule. Like, what's Ja Rule got to do with anything? So, no. I mean, I went and listened to it. Um, rating it from a, on a scale from 1 to 10, I don't even want to go there yet. But I think we'll talk about it and expound upon it a little bit more. People saying the game is trash. The game's not trash. If the game is so trash, then, I mean, he should have no problem responding to him because, I mean, he was able to respond to Nick Cannon. He was able to respond to Benzino. And he was able to, obviously, throw a cheap shot at Ja Rule in, on this album with no problem. I mean, I would not let that go. No, of course, because we're talking about somebody who comes at everybody and i think it's very odd that you're able to mention everybody's name under the sun except for the person who actually went out there and put out a record on you and you're dead silent about that and i think that speaks volumes and you know shout out to uh the people like a ll cool j who would who would not back down from that challenge too even if we were being 100 honest here guys somebody like drake doesn't back down from competition <laughs> Did he respond to Benzino? Yes, he picked a fight with Benzino and Benzino punched back. He went back down and said nothing. So he said Benzino's name. He's never 
gotten on record and said anything about the game straight up after the game put this record out on him. I mean, and this was nothing but Aaron opportunity to do so. Because again, so many people have found their name on this album. Lord Jamar is another one. And, you know, shout out to Lord Jamar. I think Lord Jamar kind of cracked all of this stuff open because years back, people were actually putting Eminem in their top fives. And when you think about it, the only material that people really had to go on to put him up so high was the quote unquote Slim Shady stuff. And to actually get um, a revisited and updated version of what that stuff was that people act like was so great, I think is a good thing. I think it's good that we were able to be reminded that this Slim Shady stuff was never that good. It's nothing but lyrical gymnastics and an album about nothing for the most part. Now, he had um, an al- a song about, you know, I don't want to say a song about his daughter, but it was about him leaving his daughter because Slim Shady was leaving and, um, you know, and what that would be like, which I thought was kind of weird, too, because this is supposed to be your alter ego. This isn't Eminem. It's very confusing. I don't think that... Um, I don't think that we really need an alter ego of a 52-year-old rapper that's living on a full effort. I mean, I just think it's unnecessary. And and when I thought about it even further, I'm like, did we ever really need Slim Shady or that alter ego in the first place? Did we ever really need that? What did, what did the alter ego of Slim Shady add to the game? Because when we talk about real shock value, we're talking about people like an Ice Cube or people like an Ice T. And those guys, the stuff that they were saying, they weren't able to go back and say, yo, I didn't say that. That was Ice Cube. This right here is is me, as opposed to my alter ego, Ice Cube or whatever. No, Ice Cube went on these radio stations, went on these television stations, Larry King Live, and he had to answer for what was on record for Ice Cube. He couldn't go out there and say, yo, this is Ice Shady. I didn't say that. That was my alter ego. So when you have somebody who has an alter ego who is out here spewing whatever they want to spew, saying whatever they want to say about whoever, and it's not real, why is there even a, I mean, how can we even listen to something that we can't take serious? Jay-Z has an alter ego too. Does he? Does he have an alter ego or does he have different names or different monikers that he goes under because everything that quote unquote ho jigger man iceberg slim all of those things that are being said jay-z seems to have to answer for no one ever sits there and says yo money ain't a thing that wasn't jay-z that was iceberg slim no one says that so you guys can kill me with this the alter ego stuff this is a whole different individual and this is somebody And this is an artist, unfortunately, that I feel like uses this alter ego to say whatever they want to say and hides behind this alter ego where they don't have to answer for what's being said, which I think at this point is corny. Um, They said that M got uh, J.I.D. out there. Yeah, I love that. I love the fact that J.I.D. is on this effort. And, um, you know, for the people who haven't been paying attention, J.I.D. has been spitting for a minute and J.I.D. is really, really dope. And I think he proved it on here. He stepped up to the plate, did what he normally does. And that's what it's about. Um, But overall, man, and and I don't know if this is because I don't know if this is because Common dropped such a stellar effort with Pete Rock. But you can actually hear in what Common and Pete Rock produced that what growth sounds like in hip hop. Uh, Common's been around since 1992. Uh, Common may be in 2005. B is almost 20 years old. It's about to be 20 years old next year. And those guys were able to come together and make a fresh sounding album with fresh topics, real topics, and being real to themselves as artists and make some beautiful music. This right here was, you know, for the people who like the lyrical gymnastics, I mean, that's cool. But I just think that music's a little bit more than that. And I think my prediction was right. This album was more so about trying to shock people and trying to out-rap or prove that you can rap and do these syllables and things 
as opposed to actually making songs that people would want to listen to. Um, I mean, I'm going to skip forward a little bit. I think Common has the song of the year with This Man. That's a beautiful record. I listened to that song like six, seven times in a row. And it reminds me that, you know what, that's what this here is about. This is about actually making music that people want to listen to and want to listen to over and over. Ask yourself, the people out there who are caping for this Eminem effort, and let's be honest here, like, ask yourself, how long are you really going to listen to this album? Are you listening to this album this week? Or is this something that you're really going to hold on to? And I've also noticed too, man, like, when it says stuff about other people, he's name dropped a million people on this album. No one really says anything because no one really takes Slim Shady seriously. And if you have an artist that's not being taken seriously, I don't see how you can be ranked on a serious um, on a serious level and as a serious artist. It takes it takes a level of uh, seriousness to be ranked and to be held high in a genre where there's so much real stuff going on. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I guess it depends on what you like. But if you don't really take hip hop serious and you feel like, as Drake's shirt said um, in his recent post, rap is a joke. If you feel like rap is a joke, then yes, go ahead and hold a Slim Shady or Eminem very, very high on your list. But if you really take hip hop seriously and you think that hip hop is a way of life, you think that these stories are so real um, that they they actually connect with you, connect with your soul. I don't see how anybody can have this ranked high. I mean, that's just my personal take on it. Now, if you guys feel a little different, you know, let me know in the comments. I mean, people ain't, am I tripping? <laughs> it's just good to have yeah, this music. No, 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 no. Don't get it twisted, man. If the shit was dope, be, I, I would say it is, man. Like, I, I'm not one of those people that, and if you've been watching the show long enough, or watching me on YouTube long enough, you know, I'll admit when I'm wrong. Like I did that when uh, with the Kendrick and Drake thing. Like when <clears throat> I didn't think Kendrick was gonna come with them records that quick, and when he did, he proved me wrong. I'm like, yo, man, he got this one. You know what I'm saying? Like I was waiting for Eminem to prove me wrong for the sake of hip hop. I want great music to be out here. I'm not out here trying to, you know, denigrate an artist to the level where I'm gonna deny great music. Now, if you guys feel like what I'm saying is off course, point me to the records. Point me to the bars. Am I wrong when I'm saying that many of the things that Slim Shady does is clout chasing things? I mean, even when you dial back to his first record, How My Name Is, and the name dropping of everybody that was on there, from Marilyn Manson to, you know, whoever was hot at the time, it's clout chasing. Real Slim Shady, that was, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, Pam and, and Tommy, uh, Christina Aguilera, uh, uh, Fred Durst, Carson Daly, whoever was hot at the time. Why is that not considered cloud chasing? I'm just keeping it real. Like, I would say the same thing about any other artist. And it just feels like whenever this artist is in question and we apply the same rules that we apply to everybody else with this artist, Mike is hating. I'm not hating. I'm not hating. I'm just keeping it balanced. You got to ask yourself. Why you're not able to be objective when it comes to this artist. That's the thing. And that's the thing that I've been constantly saying here. At the end of the day, if he's servicing um, an audience that doesn't care about that, and you guys turn a blind eye to it, and he's able to continue to do things and operate outside of the parameters that other hip-hop artists live in, and you guys are cool with that, then he's winning. But that doesn't mean that I have to sit here and accept that. As an overall hip hop fan, I mean, the truth is, doesn't rhyme over uh, production. Most hip hop artists rhyme over. Those are true things. Look at the production credits on here. Look at it. It's never rhymed over a premiere record, never rhymed over a Dilla beat. Never, ever. Look at the name dropping. It's there. I done went through some of the names. He's, he's a name dropper. It's about getting the algorithm at this point. And this whole canceled this and that canceled no no one's canceling eminem no one ever has i find it very interesting that he's doing his pop-up show in london and no disrespect to our people out in london because we love y'all but if it was like that you don't think that 
Slim Shady would do a send off in the states like that. I don't know, man. I think that um, I think that a lot of people have caught on to the fact that this artist isn't what you once thought they were, and I know it's very difficult sometimes to to come to that realization that something you grew up thinking or something you grew up feeling is not totally what it is. I hate to be the guy to tell you guys there is no Santa Claus, but it is. It's what it is, man. There is no Santa Claus. This MC that you guys thought was top five or this MC that you thought was a super battle rapper or this MC that you thought was one of the greatest lyricists ever, it's just not that. You know, mainstream media told you that's what it was and they never gave you any evidence to back that up and he never gave you any evidence to back that up and his continued uh, mission to make music and to revamp that said character has continued to show you that that doesn't exist. It's okay. You know what I'm saying? You can, if you truly love hip hop, you can really go listen to the real greats and the people who are currently active right now that are making great hip hop music or the people who, um, who might not be as active, who made much better hip hop music in his same era. Go listen to that. It's cool, man. Eight Mile is just a movie. Understand that. If you want to go back and relive the notions that, you know, Eminem is this and that, understand the B-Rabbit is a character. Go watch the Eight Mile movie. Put it on repeat if you want to. Keep watching it. Listen to Lose Yourself in the scope of a film and live that moment like this person is your champion, like it's Rocky or something. It's pretty much what it is. You know, Rocky's not a real fighter. B rap is not a real battle rapper. It's okay. It's okay, man. And don't come at me like I'm the hater because I'm the person telling you the truth. I'm here to tell you the truth. I'm not going to sit here on this microphone and lie to you. It's enough hip hop heads, quote unquote, in the media that will lie to you. I'm not one of those guys. I'm going to sit here and tell you what's great, in my opinion, of course, and we'll have discussions about it. And I will tell you when people fall short, tell you what it is, man. And it's fine, man. But at the end of the day, this death of Slim Shady is further proof that we never needed a Slim Shady in the first place. And the death of Slim Shady is not going to shake up the game in any facet. It's not. We're not missing that. Now, again, if Eminem, if Eminem excuse me, wants to come out there as a real artist and as a real MC and stick his chest out there and say these things as Eminem and not hiding behind some alter ego that, that should have stayed in his 20s, fine. Do that. Grow. That's what great artists truly do. That's what Michael Jackson had to do. That's what Prince had to do. That's what Madonna had to do. That's what Jay-Z had to do. That's what Nas had to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, grow. That's what Common is showing us right now, even in the experimental phase. You know, LL said something in this interview that he had with uh, Charlemagne that I'm going to get to in a second. I love what he had to say, man. He said, listen, man, I don't expect young artists, not artists, young, uh, the young audience, excuse me, to gravitate to my old music. It's on me to make great new music that they gravitate to so they'll go back and listen to the music that I made before. And that's real. It's like at some point you have to understand that, you know, you're you mean a certain thing to your era. And if you want to mean something to other eras, you're going to have to give them reason to do so. This artist never gave us that reason. And this project, it's not that reason. And if you have, you know, people in their, you know, late 30s and 40s out here trying to relive their TRL days uh, by listening to this effort, more power to you. But most grown people who came up in that time period, they're not getting into this stuff. I mean, who who does? You're an adult. You grew up. And this isn't grown up music by any facet. And the kids, they ain't listening to this. Tell me the 25 and under crowd is listening to this thinking it's jamming. Come on now. And see, don't shame the people who sit there and call it what it is. Like, oh, you rather listen to mumble rap, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, they would. Because really, to a certain extent, if you want to talk about mumble rap, this is mumbo jumbo rap. What is he actually saying? What did he actually really get? A, what did he actually get across on this album? And we got to call it for what it is. And if you're a true fan of lyricism, it's called a fan base. I agree. I mean, for better or for worse, right? 
but is that fan base a hip hop fan base? And if that fan base that you have garnered somehow, right, is not a hip hop fan base, me as a hip hop fan, how much can I care about that fan base, right? It's just numbers at that point. And that's cool. Get your numbers and all of that. When it comes to, you know, your legacy in hip hop, because those are the things that I care about. All that other stuff, that's something else. But when you when it comes to your legacy in hip hop, tell me how this effort stacks up against even veteran efforts that are being dropped at this moment. It doesn't. And if anybody feels like it is, they're being dishonest with themselves. I mean, the stuff that Snoop is putting out in recent years, the dog pound effort that just came out about a month or so ago, way more jamming than this. Tell me it wasn't. And see, people want to sit there and ignore those things and uh, hold things like this up. But no, we're not going to do that. And if it was jamming, if it was dope, and if it was a level of growth that we actually put on other artists as well, we'll call it for what it is. I'm not sitting here trying to make up something just so I could be right. If I'm wrong, let me know the records. Ain't nobody talking about no records in the actual chat. They're just saying Mike's hate. But again, depth of Slim Shady indeed. After speaking on this, man, I don't know. I'm going to have to listen to it a little bit more to give it a real rating. But I'm flirting with like a 6 out of 10, to be perfectly honest with you guys. And um, for veteran artists, a veteran MC and somebody who just got put in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, last year, before Tribe, by the way, but I know Tribe's going this year, before Wu-Tang, by the way. Um, I'm going to have to grade this on a very difficult scale. I can't just grade this as a regular record. I mean, you know, I, I can't. But again, uh, Super Duper says five. I mean, five out of ten. Listen, I'm not going to sit here and act like the pen work was just totally garbage i mean you know i can see put effort in it and like i said before i think he's rapping a lot better than he has over the past let's say 10 years but again what does that say overall overall to me this this effort drops the legacy a little bit because what it also showed me is even though it's better than the records that have come out in recent year from him it lets me know that this is the best that he can do and not just the best that he can do at this point. I think it's the best he can do in general. Excuse me, in general. Um, and if he can do better in his prime, it's not too much better than this. It's the same old formula. And it just lets you know that this formula doesn't work like that. And it doesn't grow like that. Like if Scarface was to go out there and try to revamp a formula that he used 20 years ago. Let's just say Scarface goes out there. And tries to, I don't want to say remake the fix, but get back into the mode that the fix did in 2024. It would be great. And it would still connect. And it would still hit those chakras. It would still hit that heart. You know what I'm saying? But this doesn't. Um, Silver Lining with the Super Chat. Shout out to the Super Chat. He says, you're just not an Eminem fan. Eminem's verse on Fuel is fire. I like Fuel. Like I said, J.I.D. did his thing. And I think the fact that J.I.D.'s on there really helps as well. I mean, listen. Um, yeah, am I not a fan? Yeah, I guess you could say. I, could, I guess you could say that. But that doesn't mean that I'm not a fan of some music that he has made. So, yes, I'm not a fan in general because of, uh, to me, his overall catalog doesn't warrant me to be a fan. But he has made music that I have liked. So I think that I hold him to a standard of what he's actually made that is great. And I don't think he consistently hits that mark. I mean, do you guys think that he's consistently hit the mark of some of his better material? How often do you feel like he consistency, consistently, excuse me, hits the mark of some of the best material that he's made? Because if we're going to go album for album, let's just say you did like the first three albums. Okay, what did the rest of the catalog do? And if you think that he has consistently hit that mark, then fine. But I think most of us have a general consensus that he hasn't hit that mark. So it's not about me not being a fan of him. 
but I'm not a fan of him because of his lack of consistency as an artist, if that makes any sense for people. But yes, um, I said, well, I speak. well, this is the thing. And I know people keep saying this, and, and I have said, guys, that I'm not going to speak on this individual artist until they drop me music. It is my job to actually speak on music, right? Y'all want me to do a hip hop show and not speak on an Eminem album that just came out? Why? Just because I'm personally not a fan? That's not the job. The job is not that. The job is to actually cover music. Now, me being a fan of that artist or not has nothing to do with me actually talking about the effort. It doesn't. Uh, shout out to, um, man, uh, is this? I can't even, what is it? Uh, Falco with the Super Chat. He said, I've always said this. Eminem has classic songs, but no classic albums. Now, I would say <clears throat> I disagree with that. Like the Slim Shady LP, right? I don't think the Slim Shady LP is a hip hop classic per se. I think the Marshall Mathers LP is a classic moment in many ways. It was such a big album, you can't ignore it. I don't, I don't know if you can. I think you could tell the story of hip hop without it. I think the story of hip hop was being told without it, even in the year two thousand. I mean, you had Ghostface running around, who was supreme clientele. You had Stankonia out there. And uh, like Water for Chocolate was out there telling the story heavy. But I will say the Eminem show, when he dropped that at 02, I think that's a big moment, not only for him as an artist. Um, you know, he had 8 Mile around the corner and, you know, 50 Cent was coming into the fold. Uh, well, that was a little bit further in the future, but the Eminem show really set that up. So I could say the Eminem show is a classic album. Um, I could I'll be honest and say that. I think there are a lot of records that I go back to from that album. I go back to Soldier. I go back to um, Superman. I go back to um, Till I Collapse. I go back to um, 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 Say What You Say. It's a dope record. So I will say that I think he does have that one classic album. Now, most people will tell you that the Marshall Mathers LP is a classic album. And, you know, I'm not going to fight you on that because, I mean, it was a big, big moment. And those records on there, I mean, the time that time at that time period, it was everything that everybody was talking about in the music world. Now, maybe not so much the hip hop world, but MTV really, really did a job when it came to promoting that record and having them take over with MTV. It was like EMTV. It was it was everywhere. It was the TRL era. So if somebody feels like the Marshall Mathers LP is classic. I'm not going to fight you on that, but I will say this. If you start going track for track on that album and match it up with other classic albums of its era before or slightly after, it doesn't really match up. I think we tried to do that the other day. We'll get Richard out trying. It just doesn't, you know, and there's levels to it. Um, I, again, I think that, you know, we could put that in the chat. I, you know, I want to put that in the poll. Let's do that. Uh, is the let's do this the Eminem show? I want to hear what you guys have to say because I know personally I don't go back to these um uh, records and I go back to I go back to Paul's Boutique all the time, Beastie Boys, great album. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, Max. Yeah, we know Get Rich Without Trying. Okay. Let's see. People in the poll are saying, yes, the Eminem show is a classic album. I'm okay with that. And again, I think that based on his career, he's definitely had some classic moments. Uh, these delusional standing. Yeah, I mean, listen, man, we're going to tell the truth today. And, and I think that and again, I'm glad he made the death of Slim Shady because it really exposed this alter ego and how, as an artist, how fraudulent the alter ego of Slim Shady really is. How could you take an artist that seriously that no one takes seriously? And in that whole notion when people back in the day before the MGK thing and all that was like, man, 
he say whatever he want. Why ain't nobody ever respond? Because no one took Slim Shady seriously in 1999 and 2000. They didn't. Like, we took it for what we hear on this album. It was a joke. It's like jokey raps. Like, I remember my man Chris. Shout out to Chris, man. He said uh, his guy just gotten out of jail or whatever and heard how my name is and thought it was a commercial. He was like, yo, you seen that commercial? Thought it was funny. And so it's like jokey raps. And, I mean, that's cool if that's the lane. But, again, when it comes to that type of chamber, it's like, it's only so serious people are going to take it. People don't people don't hold the the jokesters as high as as they do some of the more serious rhymes. Again, we talk about it on this show. The difference between Ludacris and TI with the people from Atlanta. I think we looked at, you know, Luda is more of a punchline rapper, kind of jokey with it, you know, witty, and I think he has more serious material than um than M does, but when it comes to T.I., it's a whole different tone. It just is what it is. Uh, the first LP is a classic. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it is. Um, I think that in some facets, when it comes to his rhyming style, I'm more of a fan of the way that he rhymed and approached the Slim Shady LP, but I still don't think that album is a classic. Now, if you want to say it's a classic for him and where he was at this time, I guess I can get that. But as an overall hip hop classic, it just doesn't match up to, it just doesn't match up to the other hip hop classics. Like that's the struggle when it comes to his efforts. I think the only album that he had that can actually stand up and stack up next to other hip hop classic albums is the Eminem show. The other ones, I think if you went track for track, you would struggle. I think if you went track for track with the Slim Shady LP, and let's just compare it to other debuts. Let's uh, compare the Slim Shady LP to a debut that came out months before it. Uh, it's Dark and Hell is Hot from DMX. Do you really want to go track for track on that? Do you really want to go track for track with It's Dark and Hell is Hot in the Slim Shady LP? I don't think you do. Do you really want to go track for track with the Slim Shady LP in Black on Both Sides? No, I don't think you do. Like, in these, this is the reality that we have to hit. And, and we're either going to do one or two things. We're going to accept that reality, understand that reality. Or we're going to separate this into another subgenre or something so that we can hold this up because i will say this is slightly different um yeah i agree with the people in the chat yes of course i mean i'll tell you from a person who was there i was in high school when both of these efforts dropped i was in high school when um it's dark and hell is hot dropped and i was in high school when um the slim shady lp dropped man when dmx dropped that man like it stopped everything. People became instant fans overnight of DMX. He had people like, yo, ride or die. He made that whole Rough Riders thing a thing because his following was so strong based on the music and based on that album. And everybody knew every track word for word. And this is in the South. This ain't even up top for real. You no, know, some shady LP, it was like, okay, it was better than expected. We liked Role Model. Uh, I thought Royal Model was dope. Actually, it's my favorite song on that album, Bad Meets Evil. I wanted to know who Royce was after that. Uh, Rock Bottom was dope. Um, Bonnie and Clyde 97, I thought was cool. Um, Brain Damage was cool. But again, this was jokey type of rap. And it was fun. Yeah, we got Mickey coming on, man. You know what? Let me set up Mickey because um, – I want to say this before he gets on air, man. I I listened to his album, Symphony of Dreams. And if you guys haven't heard it, you know, you got to go out there and check it out, man. Um, hold on one second. Let me make sure Mickey's still good so we can get him on. Yeah, Symphony of Dreams. <sighs> I like going into listening to albums without knowing any information on it. Like, I just want to press play and just kind of want to go from there, right? Uh Tobes produced this whole album and it's an EP 
And I didn't really know, you know, what to expect other than bars when it comes to Mickey. I know he was talking about it. He he was sharing this album that he was talking about making with me a couple of months ago. Uh, it was like a Miami bass album. And I wasn't sure if this was that one or not. And I'm looking for that one, too. We're going to talk about that when he gets on air. But he was able to make an EP. What is it? Seven tracks. And this project felt so full because... It covered everything, like the intro, basically it was storytelling. He was talking about what was going on in his life, and it set that thing up, and it set the tone. And then he came with a banger after that with Fearless. And then he comes with, you know what I'm saying, something a little bit more conscious, with peace of mind. And then he comes with, like, a posse cut on there. It's like he's giving you everything, and you're listening to a seven-track EP, and it feels like a full-length effort. I know we talk about this all the time when it comes to Daytona. People talk about it being seven tracks and this and that. But it's definitely um, a difficult thing to do to make somebody feel like they got a full album experience with seven songs. And I think Mickey was able to do that with this effort. And I can't wait to talk to him about it and just kind of get some insight about what his mindset was putting this album together. Um, and I know he had a, a tweet out there talking to some of his fans, just talking about I could bar people up on every album. But I think he said, and I'm paraphrasing this, he was saying something about this being important to make songs. And when I heard this effort, and this is after me listening to uh, The Death of Slim Shady, and I'm like, yes, this is what it's about. This is about making songs. Listen to the common and peak, man. This is about making songs, especially when you're a veteran act and you're a veteran artist. I think a lot of the allure that you guys speak about when it comes to the Slim Shady LP was the fact that it's coming out the gate. And when you're coming out the gate, you could just spaz. You could just go out there and really tell a little bit about yourself, have a couple of stories in the beginning, you know, that kind of give you a little bit of background about the artist, but it's more so about flexing your talent on that first uh, effort. But as you become more of a veteran act, people want to know a little bit more about you and not just some fictitious character that just says anything. It just says any crazy thing, you know. Um, again, for the people who do like the album, I would ask, what exactly do you like about it? Do you like the nonsensical um, word salads? Do you like the production? Uh, you can't really like the production, let's be honest. I mean, the production is, once again, it's better than normal production from an Eminem album, but the production's not great. Especially, you can't sit there and listen to uh, Common and Pete Rock's album and the transitions that Pete Rock went through. And we're going to go through that in a second on that effort and the time that he put in there and the loops that he uh, cultivated and the engineering of it and even the interlude beats in there you can't sit there and listen to that and tell me that the uh the death of some shady production is up to par this man has dr dre at his disposal the greatest hip-hop producer ever right he has an unlimited budget production from anywhere so you can't tell me that that's up to par jermaine johnson with the super chat says m's dropping this uh on the same day as common was a mistake Auditorium Volume 1 is uh, too great of a project for him to stand next to and to be compared with. And Jermaine, I said this on Wednesday. I said, this is Slim Shady LP dropping the same day as The Roots, All Things Fall Apart, happening all over again. And I said, it's a great thing that we were able to get these two efforts to drop at the same time from two veterans so people can actually see what growth looks like what a great hip-hop album looks like, what songwriting looks like, what song-making looks like, what great production looks like versus the latter. Uh, vocabulary with the Super Chat says, Leroy mentioned MF Doom not being serious. But he's not corny, though. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a correlation there. Um, but you know what? If you do want to break down MF Doom in relation to Eminem, MF Doom has a much better rap voice. He's much more creative with his um, with his approach. His production is much better. Uh, he's a much better album maker. And, you know, from a rhyme scheme standpoint, 
he's more captivating in that way as well. If we want to compare the two. Now, we've never done this. I've never even thought about the comparison of MF Doom and Eminem. But I like that comparison because it's uh, all the things that they say Eminem is great at. Doom is great at too. And his fan base loves him for those things. But if we start parsing out, you know, um, um, attribute for attribute or category for category when it comes to these two MCs, I think Doom is the winner. Um, whoa, Ludacris was out rapping all of his peers? Maybe in the booth in Rap City? What? <laughs> Listen, Mad Hatter, come on, man. Come, come on, Mad Hatter. I know you didn't super chat, but I can't let you say that. What year? Give me the year that Ludacris was out rapping all of his peers. Please. And, you know, for the people who want to mention Redman, Redman made Buddy Waters, man. <laughs> Redman made Time for Some Action. Redman made I Be That. Redman made There's a Dark Side. Do you really want to put, do you really want to go song for song with Redman and Eminem's catalog? I think that I know nobody wants to challenge me on a uh, station head with that, but I would love to take that on. You really want to go there? You really want to play Leroy? You want to do that? I would love to take on Red Man's catalog versus you taking on Eminem's catalog. I would love to do that. I would take that any day. Are you willing to take on that challenge, Leroy? While you're throwing Red Man's name in the pot like that, because I know Red Man's catalog back and forth. I know Eminem's catalog back and forth as well. You don't want those problems. You do not want those problems. And even if I put in Red Man's features too, Red Man's feature game is crazy. Do you really want to do that? I, I would love to poll that. But see, okay, you know what? Let me do that. Before we get Mickey in here, let's do that. And I'm not even going to get Mickey involved in these type of conversations or whatnot because, you know, I say a lot of things that, you know, a lot of people don't say, but <sighs> y'all know what it is, man. And again, if I'm wrong, point out the records, man. Leroy, point out the records. Give me the records. Let me uh, let me put this in here. Who's the better MC? I'm just going to be blank like that. Who's the better MC? Eminem or Doom? And I got to ask you, the people. With this album, and, and this is a legit question, and I want to ask you guys, because I know people feel like I'm biased or whatnot. With this album, do you feel like it raised Eminem's um, profile as an MC and as an artist, or do you think his ranking has lowered because of this? Now, this is one thing I will give him, and I applaud this. I applaud the fact that he's willing to still go out there and put his hat in the ring. And he's willing to go out there and still spit and still put together albums and still put in that work for that. Now, I will give him that. I think what has happened over time, I think over time, M has been, I can't find a better word for it, but been overrated by many major publications and many people in his audience. They have overrated him over time, and he spent the past 10 years trying to live up to the ranking that he never really should have had in the first place. And I think that's what is happening right now. That's what we're getting right now. Oh, Doom is beating him. Wow. Um, and again, I one of the other things that I, I gathered from the album also is this notion that there's an undertone that that everybody hates Eminem. That's not true. Like, you have a very, very strong and loyal fan base. I think what has happened over the past five to ten years is I think that the hip-hop fan base is kind of delineating his audience that, let's just be honest, is it totally a hip-hop audience from the hip-hop audience. We're just saying, like, listen, I know you guys feel this way about him as an MC or as an artist over here, but when it comes to the hip hop audience, I don't know if I could say you're better than Raekwon or Jadakiss or Ghostface, 
and Scarface and people like that. And I mean, it's just being real. Like, is that anything out of line to say that you don't think that he should be put above those individuals? And many of the people in his audience don't even really know who these artists are. And if they've heard these artists, they've heard them in passing, but they don't know their material like that. Yeah, shout out to Doom. Looks like Doom's running away with it. Um, Doom's one of the all-time greats. Uh, thanks for the super chat. Says, as a Detroiter, a lot of us aren't feeling Eminem. I agree with all of your points about the guy. He he can have two classic albums, but his music aged like milk. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all we've been saying, man. And it's okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, there's some artists that I listened to when I was in high school that I go back to now, and I'm like, I can't believe I listened to that. Now, this is just one of those cases on a large level. And, you know, it, we all grow up. It's okay. We all grow up. And sometimes the music that you listen to when you were 12 years old doesn't sound the same to you when you're 32. I mean, I, I, I used to love TLC's first album. I don't know how well that album aged outside of Baby Baby and a few songs here and there. But yeah, Hat to the Back doesn't sound like it did when I was in elementary school right now. It just doesn't. And that's okay. And that's nothing personal. That's no digs. Just understand the individual that you thought was a top five MC. It's just not. And there's no proof of it. And he's proven to you further with this current LP that he's not. So I can say that and I can move on. Let me see.